Hello everyone, I'm Disco Legend, and welcome to a Farming Simulator 19 gameplay series. With the recent news about Farming Simulator 22, I got to thinking about the hundreds of mods and dozens of maps out there and all they have to offer the game. And while there's nearly not enough time to explore them all, we can have some fun with as many as possible on this 16x map. Yukon River Valley comes with its own assortment of new production options and we're going to add some global company mods as well as anything else that we might find interesting. So let's load this map up and get to work, but more importantly, have fun. Hello and welcome to episode 1 of Yukon River Valley. We aren't going to get into all this map has to offer right now, but I will put a link below to farm some guy's tour of this map as well as his tutorial on the sawmill. Because our first business venture will be into the world of forestry. So let's take a quick look at what we need to get started. The first thing we'll need is a sawmill, and the map comes with four locations for us to choose from. They all do the same thing, but the size of the land they come on can make a huge difference in the price. So we're just going to start out by buying the cheapest option. Next, we'll need equipment to cut and transport the trees. This is where the base game and mods allow a lot of options based on how big your operation is going to be and your personal playstyle. And because we're going for a more difficult and realistic playstyle on the Bjornholm roleplay series, we're going to allow ourselves the freedom here to go a bit mod crazy. We're not going to go full on cheat mode here, but we are going to use some things like auto loading and the follow me mod. Our first purchase will be the Ponzi Scorpion King. It's going to allow us to harvest and cut the trees into 8 meter logs quickly and easily. And it only sets us back $440,000. For me personally, loading logs on the trailer can be the most time consuming part of the forestry process. So for this series, we're going to cheese it just a little bit with the Flagle Timber Runner. It comes with a fantastic, easy to use auto load function that we'll explain a little bit later. And for hauling our timber trailer, we're going to purchase this very reasonably priced Ural. It has less horsepower than some other trucks, but I think we'll be okay. One more item we're going to need to get started is wood chips. And this handy all-in-one machine will turn any tree, stump, or log it touches into wood chips for us. For storing our wood chips, we're going to purchase the Shewitt Maker with a small extension to give us a total of 48,500 liters of capacity. And for operating these last two pieces of equipment, we're going to purchase the Case Medium Tractor with 225 horsepower and a front loader attachment. And this is what $924,000 looks like. Our next obstacle will be transporting all this equipment across the river. And once we've accomplished that, we have to get all our vehicles and implements over to the sawmill, which on this size map is a lot further than it looks. The creator of the map has provided us with a simple solution to the first problem, and that's by giving us access to this transport barge. It has adjustable ramps for loading and unloading and raisable gates. So let's load this stuff up and get over there. But before we embark on our water voyage, it was nice of them to give us this starter truck, but I don't think we're gonna need it where we're going. So let's go ahead and sell it for some quick cash. And away we go.
well, we hit a bit of a bump there, but we're back on track. And for this next step, what would have taken three trips is only going to take us one, with the help of the Follow Me mod. It was a long drive, but we made it. I'm going to put a link down below to farm some guys tutorial on the sawmill, but let's hop out and take a look around for ourselves. If we open up the global company menu, we can see the inputs and outputs for our sawmill factory. The first input is the fuel source. We can use wood chips, straw, or coal. We're going to go with wood chips since they'll be the easiest to obtain for now. The second input will be the logs we harvest. And assuming we have fuel available, they'll begin to be processed into one of four outputs. The first output is wood chips. It's just an automatic byproduct of the sawmill. Next, we have long wood, which I believe can further be turned into pallets. And then we have split wood, which farm some guy wasn't sure could be used for anything else other than just selling for a profit. And last, we have barrels, which are used at the whiskey production facility. Logs for processing will be unloaded into this lake. They'll make their way up this ramp and then begin being processed. And if we walk around this way, there's a display that I think shows how many liters of logs we have in queue to be processed, because the sawmill can only process so many liters per hour. Our longwood and our splitwood will spawn in front of these two displays once we've processed enough wood. And on this side is where we can spawn our barrels. The wood chips that are created will be deposited over here automatically. And lastly, this area is the input for the fuel source. And it sounds like in time, it may be possible to make this sawmill self-sufficient and just run off the wood chips that it creates itself. And if that's the case, maybe we'll try and set up some kind of belt system to make this fuel system automatic. But for now, we need some wood chips to get this thing started. So I'm going to cut down this first row of trees all the way back to that pipe. We could just run into the trees with the all-in-one chipper, but the Scorpion King is really fun to use, so we're going to do it that way. Once we've harvested the trees and cut the logs, then we'll turn them into wood chips using the all-in-one here. Okay, we've collected our first load of logs. We're going to use our all-in-one chipper to turn it into wood chips for some fuel. And I didn't realize it till now, but the all-in-one chipper has a storage capacity of its own. So in addition to the trailer, we'll be able to store a lot more wood chips here. If the sawmill does become self-sufficient and we don't need to harvest wood chips anymore, we'll probably keep this all-in-one tool around though. It'll be handy to remove tree stumps. We have 90,000 liters of wood chips for our first load of fuel. That's not bad. So the fuel input can hold 1 million liters. So that one load gave us 9% of our max capacity. And that number won't go down until we start adding some logs to get processed. So I'm going to hop in the Scorpion King and I'll meet you back here once I've cut down a few rows of these trees. We're definitely going to do some forestry in the Bjornholm series eventually, but it'll most likely be just to pay the bills during the winter. It'll never reach this scale. So it's fun to do a series like this, just to have a reason to play around with this bigger equipment. And as you can see, we've collected quite a bit of logs. I did experiment for a few hours with the in-game trailer and loading these logs by crane, before deciding to go the easy route with the auto loader. And while there is something rewarding about the time and effort it takes to become efficient at that type of machinery, I just didn't think we had the time for it in this series. We were able to cut these trees into three 8 meter segments, and we're just going to drop those off for processing. Sometimes we got these little toothpick looking end bits. I'm going to go ahead and turn those into wood chips, 
Then we'll do a quick overview of the auto loading trailer. This trailer is incredibly easy to use and it's going to save us a lot of time. By hitting enter on the numeric keypad, you can select how many piles of logs the trailer will load. And the length of the logs that you've cut will determine which selection you need to make. So because we chose 8 meters for our logs, we'll have to select a 12 meter option on the trailer and just load one pile. If you had the option to do more than one pile, you can hit the asterisk and select which pile you'd like to load into. Other than that, all you have to do is hit O to select which side of the trailer you'd like to load from or unload to. Once you hit B to start auto loading, the trailer will pick up logs from any nearby piles on the correct side, whether the vehicle is stationary or moving. It definitely seems to work a little better and load the logs a little neater if you wait to auto load until you're lined up with the pile. Sometimes you'll have to hit B a couple of times to get the whole pile. Other times you'll have to hit B to manually stop the auto loading, otherwise it'll try to rain the same pile of logs into the trailer. The mod does come with three trailer size options, the 12 meter that we purchased and then a 15 and a 20. And we may upgrade to the 20 at some point when I'm a little more confident in my ability to maneuver it. Overall this is a great mod and it's almost a must for any kind of large scale forestry operation unless you're doing multiplayer. Well let's unload these logs and start processing some lumber. Because we need to start making some money, there's still a few more items we need to buy. Now that we have both a source of fuel and some logs, the status of the sawmill has switched to active. We can't actually produce anything yet, because the sawmill can only process 200,000 liters of lumber per hour, and we deposited 100,000 liters, so that'll take about 30 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and load up the rest of these logs and cut down some more trees. And when we come back, hopefully we have enough logs processed to make enough product to make a trip to a sell point. So, see you soon! Well, it's been a few hours, and the job is mostly done, but it's starting to get dark. So it seems like a good place to wrap up this episode. We'll pick up next time with loading up the rest of these logs and clearing out these stumps. We also need to find a means to load and transport our products to a sell point. And also start thinking about how we're going to replant these trees. So thanks for watching, and if you have any ideas or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below especially for any mods that you think might fit in nicely with this map. And I'll see you next time. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents.